Good morning everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ and I am here again with another narrated our time lapse video for us of course to watch and hopefully learn a thing or two from. Uh, as I've mentioned before, this is my jam. This is what I do. I look at my art process and just talk about it. It's not really a step-by-step -step tutorial. Um, it's more of just like a general like going on kind of conversation so but yeah i do talk a lot about art and our process and techniques and whatnot and so yeah for the uninitiated this might be a source of lesson for them so yeah anyways <laughs> welcome to my channel thank you for watching um so today what we are going to be looking at is this piece i titled desert hunt because the you know the character or the illustration portrays two characters out in the desert hunting this very glorious looking huge gigantic uh, beast of some sort obviously it's alien in nature totally sci-fi and obviously does not exist in our universe uh, not that we know of anyway so but yeah um it's a very interesting photo that I ended up painting. Um, and of course, my inspiration came from Map Crunch. If you guys have not seen the photo initially at the beginning, well, we can see it now. <laughs> it's on the screen right now. It's slightly faded out because I'm using it as a background. I'm technically tracing over it. And yes, I know people. Purists have this thing against tracing, but trust me, when it comes to professional art and doing professional work, tracing is very, very much accepted um, because it does help speed up the process. What is not accepted is tracing without knowing the foundation of drawing, which means you really need to be good with your drawing skills before people would be okay with you tracing. So yeah, practice those drawing skills without tracing first and then learn the shortcuts such as tracing. Anyways, the whole point is I have map crunch underneath um, as the bottom layer of this particular illustration because uh, as I have mentioned, and this is where drawing is very important. You can see that in the original photo, there are no characters in my illustration there are characters so the characters are pure original um creations of mine uh it's not something that was off of the photo that i traced over this is obviously something that i have created out of my own imagination so you can see that there's a girl that i just got done drawing and she's riding a hovercraft, a hover bike of some sort. I was in a hover bike <laughs> phase when I was like doing this particular speed paint. So, but yeah. Uh, so anyways, going back to Map Crunch. Map Crunch is such a great place to do photo studies in. It's a wonderful website that basically utilizes Google Maps and Google Street View. Um as part of its tool or whatnot and all it does really is just display a random street view that one would get from google street view and so it's really great because you could just browse through many a dozen photos uh, that you could use as an inspiration for any of your environment studies in this particular case i kind of sort of did i'm doing a desert environment study really it you know, when I started this illustration, it wasn't so much more of a study. Uh, it was really more of a composition uh, study. Basically, what happened was, you know, I didn't have an idea of what I wanted to paint this particular day, where whenever this was. This was 10-17 of 2020. So, on October 17 of last year, I, you know, wanted some form of inspiration. Uh, and whatnot and so i guess i decided to go to map crunch which come to think of it i haven't done a map crunch illustration in forever maybe that is something i need to do pretty soon anyways um so map crunch is a great way to find some inspiration for compositions 
for illustrations. And so when I went to MapCrunch this particular day, I just, I didn't really know what I was looking for. I was just kind of just browsing through the images, clicking on refresh, seeing, seeing if I find something, anything cool. And then out of nowhere, I saw this very, very boring photo because we, I gotta admit, man, this photo from MapCrunch is actually very, very boring. There's really nothing going on there. It's the desert. There's a desert road and then that's it. And it's like completely empty and devoid of really anything spectacularly interesting to look at. However, when I did see this particular photo, I instantly saw the potential for a composition, which in this case, the composition I saw was this two hover bikes kind of hovering over this road, looking out into the distance, into the horizon. And obviously, you know, in the illustration, it ended up being uh, animals that they're looking at, uh, which I don't think I had in mind when I first started this illustration. I think I was just messing around first. And then when I started doing the sketch and the initial sketching, that's when I was like, you know, let's add something for them to take a look at, which is lo and behold, there goes the animals. Um, so yeah, it's a glorious looking beast. I mean, if this if these animals really do exist in real life, these are way bigger than dinosaurs. For sure, because these are huge creatures. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they're the size of Godzilla or King Kong. Because, yeah man, these are like really huge beasts. So yeah. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, I saw the composition uh, in my head. I saw the photo of the hover bikes. So that's what initially drew me into the photo, right? And why I decided to use that for my photo, photo study slash illustration speed paint. Um, and then it became just totally more interesting and uh, the more I proceeded with the illustration. Um, I, I don't know at what point in time I saw the animals, the potential for the animals. Like I said, I, I knew that it was halfway through sketching the characters, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, it all just came together in the sketch. I'm like watching this right now. <laughs> as we, it unfolds in my eyes and it's always so interesting with the art process you know especially if it's like really far back because i mean for this being done a year ago it's been such a long time that i'm like what exactly was my thought process when i was when i was making this particular artwork you know i could only surmise so yeah but anyways uh, let's talk about the process so obviously what i did was i ended up doing quick sketches so there's basically two layers of sketches one is really rough uh, and then one is a little cleaner um, I'm working on the clean layer right now you could see that I'm using the rough sketches as the basis for my clean sketch um, and then I'm just obviously uh, yeah, just doing my quick sketch. And this is almost over, as you come to think of it. The sketching part anyway. So I did that. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do this quick coloring. Um, I'm going to quickly color a layer uh, with some random color noise is basically what I do. It. I go over to my uh, palette selector. I have... I created these palettes um, out of the Color Palette Cinema. Um, I just grabbed like a bunch of their palettes from the Color Palette Cinema website and created all these palettes. You see them on the right right now. And I just randomly picked um, a desert looking one, which in this particular case, I ended up choosing a lot of reds, browns, neutral colors, some oranges actually in there. Um, Predominantly to indicate that it's a desert and of course there's the blue and 
there's the blue and cyan slash they're really more cyan colors which proves to be problematic uh, for my illustration and I'll talk about that in a sec but for now basically what I'm doing is I'm just picking some random hues out of those eight colors and kind of just making a bunch of color noise with my random mech brush. My random mech brush is set to obviously change its shape and change this hue slightly so there'd be a lot more hues than eight hues that I'm selecting. And then what I'm going to end up doing after I do this noise and I just realized I'm totally doing a much different process than I normally do. So after laying down like the base color and whatnot, I'm going back with the multiply brush was it set on multiply okay I knew that I did the multiply on those characters up front because I knew that I darkened the shadows up a little bit and I think what I just did was I just lightened it up with either screen or color dodge it's definitely not color dodge because it's not too bright um but anyway, so after laying down those colors, I would either go back with some multiply, some color dodge. Um, basically what I do is try to add more shadows and lighten up some of the scene a little bit. And after all these tweaks with the lighting and the color and whatnot, I merged them all in one layer, which just happened just now. And then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up smudging all of this into this nice little base paint that I do my detailing on. I try to smudge all the colors within the lines, basically meaning I try to keep recognizable shapes. Like I don't just like smudge everything all in one go because then that would be just like one really messy looking photo. But I try to keep like the general shapes for the most part. So you'll see me like keep the shapes of the animals um, and then you'll see me when I'm smudging, I'll keep the shapes, uh, of the characters and then of the road, um, the environment. I don't care so much about keeping the shape of the environment. You can see that when I'm smudging the sky, I'm just like, I'm just going to smudge all these colors together, blend them all. And I'm going to do the same thing with the ground. You can see that I don't really care about what I messed up or what I mix color wise. Because I know that they're kind of just background. It's not something that I really need to worry so much about. But obviously the ones that I need to worry the most about are the background characters, the animals, and the foreground characters, and kind of the road. Like I had to worry about it because the road is a good indication of, of perspective. You know, kind of gives the viewer an, a good idea of how big these creatures truly are. So, so you can see me smudge the road and then I'm about to start smudging all the characters and after that I will start my detailing process but for now let's go ahead and just watch it and yeah see the process unfold our, in front of our very eyes.
So at this point in time, I have sort of finished this guy. Um, I'm basically have slowly started my detailing phase of my illustration. So after I smudged everything, I mean, you guys could see that there was just base paint that got created. You know, everything's kind of fuzzy for the most part, but you could kind of tell what things were. You could kind of tell where the hover bike was and the characters, and you could tell where the animals were because I preserved the shape as much as I could, right? But what I really wanted was like a base paint where there's like a mixture of colors on the canvas for me to work with and just slowly detail. Um, so that's been my process uh, as of late where I just kind of throw some colors onto the canvas and then smudge them all together until I get some form of base paint and then slowly work my way up from there. So it's kind of like a sculptural process almost, you know? where I kind of slowly sculpt details out of this goopy mess that I've created. Um, you saw that when I did that with this guy, where this guy was kind of like weird, funky looking, but then I just color pick from the sky and just kind of just blend them all together. And now we have this nice little gradient sky going on. I did end up working on this some more because I do remember adding some clouds to it. Um, but uh yeah and now uh that i was done with that part um i guess initially i just wanted like a plain sky or something i wasn't really thinking of adding clouds but i know in the end i ended up adding clouds but after i got done with that you know i started doing all this marquee selection for all the foreground and the background characters and part of the reason why i'm doing all the selection is so that I could localize uh, my work. You know, if I'm detailing on the background, then I would just want to detail the background without affecting the characters. If I'm detailing the characters, I want to just work on the characters without affecting um, the background and whatnot. So um, that's just what happened. That's just what transpired. Uh, it seems like a lengthy process, but obviously I got done with it. And now I'm painting the sky, just as I had mentioned, I ended up going back with the sky. And you can see, you know, with the marquee selection, it keeps me from going, you know, to any of the other parts of the canvas, which means I could be very freely expressive with my motion without fear of painting over the animals in the background, for example. I mean, you just saw me swoop down at the bottom, almost towards the bottom area. Well, not really the bottom area to painting, but really more the middle area slash bottom of the sky part, right? Um, where most of the beasts are and then when I swoop down I didn't end up painting over the beats because I have my marquee selection it keeps everything localized to you know what you want to work on very very handy tool um, the counterpart to to this if you're do, you know if one was to work traditionally would be masking Maybe when you take like a masking tape and kind of ma mask parts of your canvas so that, you know, when you work on a canvas and you want to be expressive with your motion, you don't end up harming parts that you don't want to harm or you don't want to paint over. So, yeah, that's this is basically what this marquee selection technique is pretty cool. You could do that in digital art. So, yeah, I obviously localized the background sky so I could work on it and now I'm about to work on the desert itself and I know that this went by quickly because it's a fairly easy process I mean you could see me go through that right now I'm just quickly glazing over or click quickly painting over the scenes I'm rebuilding the road oh I forgot to do that and then, yeah, um, I really want to preserve the freshness look and the impressionist look of my brush strokes. Like, I didn't want it too over rendered, looking like it's, you know, too. Uh... Well, I didn't want to say overwork <laughs> because 
I, I, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, my other types of artwork. Because I do really long format works where I spent like 30 hours on painting. And I don't want to say that those kind of paintings are overworked because they never are, you know. But they are nicely rendered. But I, I really was going for a speed paint for this particular piece. So I knew that I wanted to keep the rough look versus having a smooth, smooth, polished look, right? And so when I worked on the background, you can see that that was like, what, a few seconds of this time lapse. So in real life, maybe I just went over that background <laughs> in like five minutes or so. It went by pretty quick. Uh, as you can see, I, you know, didn't have that much thought to it because really, you know, after that whole smudging action thing, everything was just pretty much set in stone as to what the environment is. So I didn't really need to super detail it or anything. All the action really lies within the middle part of the centerpiece where the beasts are and where the foreground characters are. And you can see I'm working on the animals that is being hunted by these two foreground characters. I'm doing the smudging thing again. Kind of just smudging them around. And I think eventually either I will go back with a color dodge to add some highlights or actually just paint in the highlights itself. I don't remember what particular technique I use. But man, now that I'm like looking at me working on this, I, I really, really like the amount of colors that got blended into these animals. In the end, towards the end, I needed to fade out these animals because at, with atmospheric perspective, you know, it happens. Oh, I did color dodge. There goes my answer to that question. Did I do color dodge or did I paint it? And it turns out I did the color dodge. So I pick a saturated dark red color and then, yeah. And then just did a color dodge. Really, really cool, man. Man, I love, I love that, those animals, yeah. I love all those colors that I ended up putting on there. Really, really cool. But anyways, I have to fade out all these colors and I have to end up basically desaturating them a lot. So a lot of these cool things that I'm like looking at right now that I'm saying, wow, they look really cool. A lot of these will actually eventually go away. And it makes sense for me to desaturate them because in real life, and oh man, I totally, totally, totally love these birds. Man, oh, these birds just like put things together for me. Um, which I will talk about in a minute. I'll explain the birds some more. But man, that was such a cool touch. It's a very, very cool touch. Um, but yeah, going back to the colors of the animals, I had to fade them out. Atmospheric perspective, it is a real life phenomenon. Uh, things that are farther away are more desaturated, more blended into the background, has more of a bluish hue. Um, so eventually I ended up copying all those animals, repasting them into the scene, and then I think changing the opacity on it. I'm pretty sure that's what I did instead of, play, of painting over the haze. I think I might have experimented with that, but then I ended up with just changing the opacity of the animal so that it slightly fades away. Um, so... The background characters are obviously like really easy and was real fast to work with simply just because they're in the background, you know, they're not in the foreground like these two characters are, which is going to be the next main focus of my time lapse for the next seven minutes because obviously, duh, they're the main characters. I would have spent more time on them. But yeah, going back real quick on those animals. Um, those birds was a cool touch uh i didn't i didn't think about adding the birds until i kind of this issue in my head kind of just popped out which was like the scale issue right so there's a road that kind of leads towards where the animals are and the road in itself kind of gives a good indication of how big these animals are 
But given the fact that the two foreground characters are in front of them, it, it still kind of messes with the eyes on how truly massive and gigantic these creatures are. So when I added the birds to kind of indicate, hey look, this is your average size birds flying right next to this very huge thing, then all of a sudden it just makes sense, right? Like, wow, okay, they are big things. And I didn't even think about adding them until I remembered um, this one particular painting that I wish I could remember who made it now. But it was a painting of a huge dragon pl flying right next to, you know, average size birds, you know, and the birds look exactly like the way it's portrayed here. You know, they're very tiny compared to these big creatures. And I was just like, oh yeah, I could add birds to kind of indicate size, right? And when I thought about that and added it, you know, as an experiment, I was like, wow, this effect is really cool. And so I was really, really glad that I did that because it kind of made the whole scale very, very cohesive throughout the piece. So yeah, really interesting thing that happened in, during the creation process that I wasn't really consciously thinking about. It just kind of just happened. So that was just really cool. And I just really just wanted to add that and mention that before I forget. And then obviously now I'm working with the characters, the very, very green characters. that <laughs> I got in so much trouble for. <laughs> yeah. And in all honesty, now that I look back at this time lapse and like looking at, at this thing, I'm like, wow, yeah, they're super, super green. <laughs> So yeah, the the funny thing that happens when one is painting or when one is drawing or when one is in the middle of their flow, sometimes they will create errors, right? And these errors can turn out to be like really, really great. Um, according to Barb Ross, some of these mistakes are happy little accidents. That's his term for it. And it's true because an accident slash error might happen and then you could work your way around it and like come up with something very, very cool. A great example of that would be the colors that I ended up mixing on those animals in the back. I wasn't consciously putting all those colors on there, but when it, they got put on there, it looks really, really cool, which kind of makes me sad that it's going to go away in a second. Um, but in the case of the foreground characters, the green is immensely off. Like, it's very antagonistically off. <laughs> like, it just, just, it does not, it just does not belong. Is the only way I could put it, you know? It, yeah, they're right. <laughs> So basically what happened was after I ended up doing this pea paint, I think I posted it on Sketchdown, Ramen Sketchdown, okay? Um, I'm part of this Discord group called Sketchdown. It's, I've been nicknamed, I've nicknamed it Ramen Sketchdown. And we are not affiliated with the Sketchdown podcast that is on YouTube. So um, just to clarify, it's two totally different groups. There's a Sketch Zone podcast group, and then there's Ramen's. Uh, sketch zone which is this group I'm part of and you know it's a group of artists that gets together and obviously do artwork and critique each other's artwork and help each other grow as artists um, and so basically that's what happened I posted this particular SP paint after I got done streaming it I think I was streaming it um, to them at this point and I just <laughs> I just got a lot of critique on the green and you know i was defending it at first i was like dude i don't know what you guys are talking about you guys are just like whack you guys need to get your eyes checked <laughs> or something look there i am feeding the animals so basically what i ended up doing was i copied the animals and i'll paste them back again and lower the opacity but i obviously painted them over see there it is i changed the opacity to 60. So you can see that the colors are like way, way more muted than what it was originally. But it makes so much more sense because now that they're farther in the back, right? Um, the foreground characters really pop out some more now that they're the those creatures are faded. Um, 
But yeah, I got critique about the green and it took me forever to capitulate and agree with them. Um, eventually I did end up doing some fixes and some tweaks. And yeah, I'm actually very grateful for their critique because if it weren't for them, <laughs> I wouldn't have come up with a much better looking picture. So yeah, unfortunately I didn't get to record it, but there it is in the final photo, all my edits, and it looks way better. So anyways, thank you guys for watching this video with me. I hope you guys learn a thing or two from it. Uh, like and subscribe. I will catch you guys in the next video. Good night.